Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Kenny Burdine. He's with the University of Kentucky as an extension economics specialist there. Well, Kenny, for a livestock economist, especially cattle right now, this should be a really good time. And you know, we have to look at like the causes, like what what has caused cattle markets to be this high? Numbers have been the conversation all around the United States. Absolutely. You know, the, the cattle supply is tight. We know that. We're, we're pretty low on um, cattle numbers in general. This cow herd hit kind of a relative peak in 2019, and we've been decreasing since then. And, and you're probably aware, you know, USJ put out their January 1, 2024 estimates. When was that? We've been January 31st. So as you can imagine, we've, we've spent some time talking through that, what it likely means for 2024 and beyond. And in Kentucky, we were a little bit more isolated from the drought. So we saw a lot of shift in numbers in the western part of the United States. It was dry virtually everywhere in 2022. So we lost a lot of cows that year virtually in all states. Um, so we saw a pretty sizable decrease in cow numbers during 2022. At the national level, I like to watch the beef cow number. It was down two and a half percent during 2023. So in other words, from January 1, 23 to January 1, 24, about two and a half percent fewer cows there in the U.S. So, you know, what that means going forward is these calf crops are going to be smaller. So in terms of basic feeder cattle supply, you expect it just to get tighter. It was spottier in 2023. For the most part, I think it was drier in the eastern half of Kentucky in 2023 than in the western half of Kentucky. And again, I'm, I'm kind of I'm painting with a broad brush there. But for example, where where we run some cattle here in south central Kentucky, I'm going to call it, you know, south of the, the Lexington area. Um, we were pretty dry. And I can tell you that, hey, even really even in Western Kentucky has been fairly short supply. So those things, I think, came into play. Um, you know, the, the, the one surprise that came that stood to me in the report, Joanna, they had Kentucky's beef cow numbers a little bit higher. Um, I didn't read a lot into that, but it did surprise me. I think they estimated Kentucky with a 12,000 cow increase. Now, to put it in perspective, we've got about 900,000 beef cows in Kentucky. So it's not a it's it's about a one I don't know one one and a half percent change, but that did surprise me. Um, heifer retention was down, and our other categories of like um, you know like heavier feeder cattle were down, but but the cow number was odd to me, given the fact that hay supply was so tight. Just travel in the state, I didn't get the impression folks were adding cows, and if you just simply look at how many cows ran through auction yards last year, I expected Kentucky numbers to be down as well. And you know, it's worth noting that we were the only state in the top 10, maybe even the top 17 in beef counters that actually had an increase estimated by USDA. So that was kind of an eyebrow raiser to me. Absolutely. Because usually when we, when we talk about these high prices and they're predicted, people really start retaining heifers. They keep more heifers to try to increase. Her. We really haven't seen that shift yet. Not yet. Um, if you look at you know, heifers as a percent of total cattle on feed. That, that's kind of one way I like to look at that. So in a time like 14, 15, when we're really holding back heifers to expand, heifers will be 30 to 34 percent of on-feed inventory. And right now we're still up around 40 percent. So that's a sign that's a sign that heifer retention hasn't started yet. Of course, remember that even if heifer retention does start during 2024, you know, we're not going to see an impact on the calf crop until 2025 at the earliest. So it sets us up for, I think, you know, some good years here, at least on the supply side. You know, I think a few things just kind of chew on Joanna from my perspective. You know, the fact that costs are higher are definitely relevant, right? So even if calf prices are as high as they were in 14, 15, profit level is not as high as it was. You know, that's number one. I think the fact that we have had some dry years in a lot of places back to back comes into play. And let's not ignore interest rates either. You know, it's it matters because it's, you know, if I'm thinking about adding cows or expanding, you know, the cost of breeding stock that I finance is higher. And let's be honest, with interest rates high where they are, that means, you know, the value of those heifers I could sell today instead of retaining them, you know, those dollars are worth more now today than they would be down the road. So I think all those things are probably going to lead to what I think is going to be kind of a slow expansion this time as opposed to what we saw back in 2015-16. Thanks for watching and have a great day.